symmetry, okay? The actual solutions to the equations depend also on something called boundary conditions, and the solutions to the equations do not have to have the full symmetry of the equations themselves. So it turns out the universe we live in does not have the full symmetry of Einstein's basic equations out of which they emerge. And in particular, there is a natural uh, <clears throat> cosmic time, and that cosmic time is called the co-moving time, uh, and there's also something called a co-moving distance, and in that we can imagine our moment now at our particular place in the universe, and you can imagine an extraterrestrial in a galaxy very far away, but at the same cosmic time. What that means is when that extraterrestrial points his telescopes at the sky, he sees the cosmic micro he sees the cosmic microwave background radiation from the Big Bang at the same temperature as our temperature, 2.75, whatever it is, degrees Kelvin. And also, he's in uh, what's called the co-moving frame because when he uh, moves his radio telescopes all around and his antennas, microwave antennas, all around the sky in all directions, he sees that, the, uh, that, the, that it's a black body distribution and everything's kind of isotropic. It looks the same in every direction. And, uh, or if he sees a certain kind of blue shift, red shift, from that it's like a Doppler effect, he can calculate his velocity relative to this preferred uh, global frame of reference. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay, now it turns out, in terms of this global frame, the co-moving global frame of reference across the entire space, uh, section of the universe, uh, our future horizon is a finite distance away. It's long, it's going to be like you know, 10 billion 15, maybe 20, 25 billion light years away from us, but it's a finite distance away. And as time proceeds, as we move along our world line toward the future, that future horizon is getting closer and closer and closer to us. Okay. It's getting close okay. to us, but it's like, you know, it's like the hair in the hood. But we go infinite amount of ordinary clock time, and we get closer and closer, we never reach it. It's a limit, so like in calculus, so it's called a limit. You, you approach the limit, but you never reach the limit. But the distance is getting closer and closer, while the area is staying the same. At the reciprocal, it's just its dark energy density. And the reason for that is there's not, we're not in Euclidean geometry anymore. It's, it's non-Euclidean, you know, Alice in Wonderland warp geometry, so the, the, the formulas are different. Um, but, and now we also have a past horizon. That's called the past particle horizon. And, um, but you can show we're getting further and further away from our past particle horizon, but we're getting closer and closer to the future horizon. And it turns out that you cannot use ordinary cause and effect. You cannot assume that causes are in our past because the only way to explain the dark energy is that the dark energy is advanced wheel of Feynman Hawking radiation being radiated from our future horizon. Our right, future this is time. your original onset. This is my original uh, onset. And that, that gives basic... Now, it turns out there were some Koreans. There's three Koreans who published a paper. Is the dark energy uh, horizon... Uh, Hawking radiation, but they're not, so they have a, the, the idea, very similar, very close to what I'm saying, but they don't know, they don't mention that this horizon has to be in our future, so they don't have the retro causality, they don't have it's back from the future, the wheel of Feynman idea, they don't have that. And um, this future horizon is like a spherical surface that uh, we're in the center of, it's also, it's the hologram. It is the whole, it's just like the hologram plate. You shine laser light through a hologram plate and create a three dimensional image. So we are like three dimensional images being created backwards in time from the future. And the whole thing, though, is what Igor Novikov called the loop in time, this globally self consistent loop. It's self creating. You know, uh, one of the uh, classic objections against uh, time travel to the past is that uh, complexity and ideas can create themselves. Well, it turns out that's. That's, in fact, the way it works, that, what I say. And, in fact, uh, you know, if you read Roger Penrose's books, he talks about pre-sponsor, the certain experiments of Benjamin Libet here at UCSF, and uh, Dean Radin and Dick Bierman, they confirmed them. And it turns out our ordinary consciousness always involves a little bit of retrocausality, a little bit of precognition, like we're getting ideas. We're, our own ideas come from the future. It's exactly like when Mozart said, when I write down my symphonies, I hear them. What Mozart is hearing, he, it's precognitive remote viewing from SRI, put off and talk, the CIA experiment. What, what <laughs> Mozart's, he's hearing his future performances, so it's creating itself. And mm. whenever a physicist, Einstein, anything, but all of us, whenever we get an idea, it's, 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 the idea is coming to us. It's kind of like platonic forms. The platonic forms 
have an, a life of their own, so to speak, and they're all living as uh, computations on this future horizon. That's, that's the general picture that, that seems to be emerging. And uh, it's a crazy picture. It's very, very crazy. But is it crazy enough to be true? Well, and, is there any way of experimentally verifying some of Yes, the experiment I already did. There's no other explanation for the dark energy. Density. Okay, the, the dark energy ratio that's one thing, which yeah. Is, yeah. is explained very nicely. It's very nicely. So it's a question of all <laughs> so that's the. One, that's one. That's, that's a very important one. Important it's, it's, it's a definitive laws. one because there's no alternative. Let someone else explain it differently. Okay, so yeah. And, so that, and, and it, also, well, it also explains the arrow of time. See, it explains, this is another, the, the whole, this book from eternity here is all about what's the explanation for the arrow of time. Sean Carroll, professor at Caltech, has written an entire book saying this is a big problem in physics. Nobody knows the answer. Well, it's trivial in this picture. The arrow of time, because the entropy of our universe is the area of this future horizon. And the area goes from one bit to 10 to the 123 bits. And that explains the arrow, and it explains why we age as the universe gets bigger and bigger. And that's the arrow of time. So it's, it solves two big problems at once. It solves the dark energy density cosmological constant problem, why, why, why we're wrong by 123 powers of 10 or so, and also it solves why, is, why do we age as the universe gets bigger and bigger. As the universe expands, why is the aging of the irreversibility of thermodynamics in the same Why is direction? there a direction of arrow, a direction of why, and, and why is that direction, direction in the same direction, so to speak, as uh, the ex cosmological expansion of the universe. Hmm. See? So, and so those are two big things. Now, I challenge any mainstream physicist to come up with a better idea. <laughs> you know? All right, you got a better one? I'd like to hear it. I haven't heard it yet. Now, let's get back to it. Dan, <laughs> that's my spiel. You got any questions, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's it. Okay. Well, see, uh, what I'm saying is it's, it's still not quite crazy enough, Jack. Well, that may be. I'm only talking and about, so, okay, let's make a right, distinction between right, the necessary right, sufficient. Right, right, right. I'm only talking about necessary constraints on any uh, uh, worldview that tries to merge spirituality with real science, you know. Well, that these are necessary. Right. Again, you can't violate, if you violate these, you go, it's in the crackpot realm because these are. Battle tested. Right. Okay, so All it doesn't right. mean there's well, there isn't more. Of course, yeah. there are other things. Chicken Little. That sounds crackpot. Like it doesn't that he sound like a crackpot to you? Well, Chicken to, Little. Well, to, 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 but so does, we are at the center of the cosmic egg. The cosmic egg that we're <laughs> cracking is this. Yeah. Uh, well, see. Crack. All right, we're gonna crack crack the cosmic egg. It's, well, that's what's chilling. beyond the cosmic horizon. Okay, but hers. Yeah. Well, but so, all right. Okay, now look, right, another way to say right, this. Look, nah, nah, nah. I know how to say this. I know how to say this, Dan. I'm only talking about the hardware. You're talking about the programs, the well, software running on the hardware. But wait a minute. I'm talking about the brain of God. You're talking about the mind of God. And when I say brain of God, I mean also B R A N E, as in string M, you know, string M theory and brain theory. And I also mean B R A I N as in biological brain. Like I, I think brains. Jack is worried about what I'm about to say. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm not filibuster. worried about it. I just may not agree with filibustering. it. Filibustering. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is a filibuster. Filibuster. <laughs> God, I must be a Republican. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, well, look, look, let's crack, let's see if we can crack that egg. You presented me with the egg. Yes. And now I, it's up to me to try to crack it. See if there's a crack in the egg. Crack in the egg. Well, I think there are two or three potential cracks here. There's first the distinction between software and hardware. You don't necessarily have to buy that. I think you do, but I'll give you the reasons yeah, later. Remind right. me. That's the Bohmian interpretation of quantum right. theory. There's okay. a clear, there's a clear, a clear mathematics in the theory. But go ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, but kind of related to that, it is the um, holographic aspect of this, no, well, the, I, which I, does I, tend to confuse. See, that could confuse no, no. the hardware. And no, the it software. doesn't. No, no, no. That's not so. Because I'm, I'm oh, using the hologram. I'm using oh, Seth Lloyd's picture. I'm using Beckenstein standard picture. There is a clear difference there. As far as I could tell, I'm, so right. I don't think I don't think what you're saying is 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 true to the actual. So physics. you agree that I'm I'm in the crackpot zone? 
Well, um, and, well, and you know, no, what you have to do, <laughs> you have to, what you would have to do is look at the papers on the holographic theory and mm -hmm. show, mathematically, show where what you're talking about would fit in with that. You can't just, like, make up your own rules. That, that, when, yeah, when, well, when amateurs make up, and of course he's not amateur.